Here I am with my new friends. Um, I'm Aurora. Aurora um, and... And Edward from Giovanni Blue, an Italian scientific outreach page. Tell, tell me a little bit about you guys. What, what brought you here? Where, when, where did you come from? Well, I'm an 18 years old high school student from Italy, more specifically from Milan. And I'm a science and content creator for the science dissemination page founded by Edoardo, which is called Giovanni Blue. Um, Giovanni Blue aims to uh, current information about nuclear energy. Most importantly, we want to inform our peers, so also other teenagers, because we felt that information that Italian teenagers had about nuclear energy wasn't enough, and more specifically, it wasn't correct to inform them. Yeah, so you said everything, almost. Uh, we know perfectly that the biggest problem when it comes to nuclear energy is communication of it. So I said, okay, what can I do to improve it? And I said, maybe, uh, you know, if we can find a new way to communicate the, the problem of climate change. And specifically, uh, so I chose to, to talk about nuclear energy uh, because, of course, it's the cleanest and safest source of electricity that we, have, that we have today. We are growing slowly, but it's not easy to talk in a country where you know, the scientific literacy score is very, very low because in Italy we have this big problem of people that don't know how to read data and science. Uh, but we're doing our what we can and it's working out pretty well. Italy has been sort of anti-nuclear historically, right? Why do you think that is? Well, Italy is kind of a paradox when it comes to nuclear engineering because if we think that the first physicist who invented what we can consider the first nuclear reactor ever was Italian, so Enrico Fermi, when he built the Chicago Pylon, it's kind of a paradox because Italy could have been leading the nuclear energy sector. But unfortunately, due to the fear um, given by the past nuclear accidents, we decided to give it up. And this is kind of a problem. Yeah, absolutely agree. As you said, uh, one thing that I always say is that Italy was a nuclear nation, is a nuclear nation, and will be a nuclear nation, even though maybe it doesn't even know <laughs> that it is. Uh, as you said, uh, we can say that we invented nuclear energy thanks to Enrico Fermi. Uh, when we operated our nuclear power plants, we had engineers coming from all over the world to see them. I think, for example, uh, the, about the Enrico Fermi nuclear power plant that was very, very, was for its time was a jewel. And yeah, still today, there is no nuclear power plant that is being built without an Italian. Uh, Italian engineering is very, is requested all over the world. Um, and so, yeah, we are really, really uh, the point of the, the iceberg when it comes to nuclear energy. And it's really sad that we today, well, I mean, today we are reconsidering nuclear energy thanks to the, the new government, even though it's, it's a little bit, little bit controversial, the topic of nuclear energy still. Uh, but we are quietly reopening to the topic. So, um, yeah, I, I've, I'm, I hope that we'll be having nuclear energy in the next 15, 20 years, maybe, who knows? Not tomorrow, but yeah. maybe the day after tomorrow. What do you guys use for electricity right now? Uh, mostly we base our energy on gas and imported also energy from other countries. For example, 12% of our important energy comes from France, which also produces its energy with nuclear power. So when we fight for adding nuclear power to our energy diversification, is also to let Italy become independent from the energy factor. Yeah, exactly. It's very funny that we started with 10-12% uh, of nuclear production and, and then we shut down all the, the plants. And then we started importing from France, from Slovenia, from Switzerland, that they all have free, all of these countries have nuclear power. So basically we completely changed uh, our power plant, but we still use nuclear power if, even if we don't know it. And another thing I would like to say is that, yes, we use a lot of gas and uh, not oil, but um, a little bit of coal too. Uh, so mostly 80% of our electricity comes from, from, from fossil fuels today, that's very bad. Uh, but we also have a little bit of hydropower, uh, but the problem with hydropower is that because of climate change we are experiencing droughts, there is uh, being severe, more, like every year uh, they are uh, more severe. So unfortunately we can't rely on that for you know um, a good storage anymore. So we have to consider nuclear power to, uh, with, together with renewables to decarbonize for 20, 2050. Has there been more discussion within uh, your government about nuclear, taking oh, yeah. another look at it? Especially nowadays, nuclear energy became a new topic on the political side. Unfortunately, in Italy, we have to consider how it's more um, considered on the right side of politics. Um, unfortunately, the left side is more considered on green energy, so all the renewables. It's not considering nuclear power as part, uh, nuclear energy as part of the energy diversification. And we hope that this technology will just become independent from a political point of view, and it will just be considered for its important and its key point against climate change.
Yeah, if there's one thing that I really hate is when, you know, energy as a um, political color. I hate when energy sources are associated to a specific part of, the, of politics, of a way of thinking about, you know, society. And I don't like that. Uh, for example, in our country, we have renewables that, are, as you said, are more on the left side. And then you have nuclear energy that, for wrong reasons, are associated to, is associated to the, to the right side. Um, but today we are reconsidering nuclear power, but there's a lot of mess uh, in the government because, uh, for example, we have the Prime Minister Meloni that is, doesn't, doesn't really know what to say about nuclear energy. Like three days ago she said, yes, for fusion, I don't even want to think about fission because we don't like fission, but uh, actually the, the Minister of, of Energy and uh, Security and the Environment loves nuclear energy and said to us, actually, uh, he said to us that um, he would like to build more SMRs and probably also consider large-scale reactors, um, but, you know, Politics is politics, so you don't you never know. So yeah, even in, in inside the government, the, the views are very different. So yeah, the government is confused on the topic, uh, but we hope that they'll find their way. <laughs> how, how did you guys first hear about nuclear energy? When did you discover, you know, the need to advocate for it? Um, we have different stories. Basically, when you are in Italy and you are doing middle school, when you are on your third year, you have to write a thesis and you have to choose a subject based on what you have studied through the year. And I studied the topic of energy because it was the one that interested me the most. And I had to talk about nuclear energy, but I remember that at the time I talked about it in kind of a bad way because the only information that I could have found online and all my school textbooks were so little, so wrong and still based on the fear of the past incidents that I had this idea stuck in my mind that nuclear energy was a sort of bad source of energy. When I started high school, I started taking my first physics lessons. I started reading books, getting more informed on what it is about. And I discovered that there was so much more about it. And it's really important to do a good information of it. And I was like, okay, if I change my mind on this topic, maybe teenagers can also change their minds. And that's why I'm working for Giovanni Blue and that's why I'm doing my job. Mine is awesome. much simpler than that. <laughs> So, no, I'm just a technology lover. I love technology. I started, you know, I started with aviation. I started being passionate about aviation. Then after that, uh, searching on, online, uh, I understood that there was this very bad thing called climate change. And so I started looking up the first data, the first graphs that I really like reading graphs. And I looked up at the nuclear energy ones, but I think it was casual. And yeah, I saw that actually nuclear is much safer and much cleaner than um, what my teacher used to tell me. So yeah, I started thinking, okay, maybe we should work to improve the communication on this topic. And so I founded Giovanni Blue. And now we're doing what we're doing. We're here in Dubai at COP28. I'm really glad to hear that um, like energy and climate education are part of your curriculum, it sounds like. And yeah, talked to a lot of teachers in the US and maybe they talk about climate change a little bit but not about the solutions usually uh, so that that's that's really good to hear uh have you guys ever seen a nuclear plant before yes yeah um personally i visited the coerso power plant in italy which you don't get to see much because it's almost all dismissed but it's fine we still have the control rooms and or the historical buildings of the coerso power plant um i visited chestnut which is a sort of mini nuclear reactor experimental for university purposes at the Polytechnic of Milan, which is also almost all dismissed. So I only saw the control room and their basic buildings. Uh, um, I saw also another university small nuclear experimental reactor at the University of Wisconsin Medicine. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I spent three weeks there for a program on sustainability and I had the opportunity to visit the reactor. Yeah. And I went to ITER to see the fusion reactor projects and yeah. what the engineers are doing. That's, that's that. pretty yeah. good uh, nuclear tourism. Yeah, and now it's, the Baraka nuclear yeah, reactor uh, that we're going to see. So this, this will be the first like full-scale nuclear yes. power, operating nuclear power. Yes. Okay, so first of all, I would like to say that I'm very jealous. Uh, <laughs> but if we have to count the exact number of reactors, we should be the same because I visited Trikas 10 nuclear power plant that has four reactors, uh, and all the four are operating. So theoretically, we are yeah. we're even. Uh, and yeah, today I'm going to Baraka, so we'll be eight. So two nuclear power plants. <laughs> what are you guys most excited about seeing? Or what What about the experience? Made you sign up for the tour? Mm, maybe for me, since it's my first actual nuclear operating power plan, seeing how things work, how many engineers, technicians, and physicists work together to actually produce electricity that can be used for a country. So 
And of course, I can't wait to see the beautiful reactor domes in the distance. But if there's one thing that I really like to see is that, um, you know, it's not just the engineering behind it. It's not just the, the actual power plant, but it's what it represents. It represents a 25% decrease in carbon emissions. You know, it's, it's almost agreed that it's completely de decarbonized. Uh, thanks to a few square kilometers of power plant uh, and all, I don't know, how many years was it? Five years that it was built? Ten years? Uh, ten years? Ten years, yeah. I mean, it's nothing if you look at the actual, you know, percentage that was cut of non emissions. So, yeah, I'm very, I'm very excited to see this beautiful view because of what it represents. What's, what's like your favorite nuclear myth and how do you like to bust it? One of the key points that made me thought when I was in middle school that nuclear energy wasn't a good source of energy was that we couldn't manage nuclear waste. It was something that was stuck with me. I remember this diagram that I made, which was completely false, of, of having, okay, maybe we have this nuclear waste and we don't know what to do with it. No, <laughs> we actually have many resources. We have dry casks, so we have deposits, we can manage them. We have geological deposits. We are also having startups starting to think about how to reuse nuclear waste. So it's, it's not an issue. We're actually totally able to manage it. And that's what makes it reliable and also a good source of energy. Okay, mine is not really a myth because I think that, the, you know, we all know the, the, the most common myth, like it's not safe, it's expensive and blah, blah, blah. But I think one thing that one guy once told me was nuclear power is bad because it produces too much energy and we need a world with less energy if we want to, you know, achieve the climate goals and to survive as a human species. Mm. And I remember that I laughed at the beginning, but then I was a little bit, you know, that's terrible. <laughs> I would love to live in a world with more energy for everyone. I, I really, I'm really scared when I hear people that say we need less energy. Like go to Uganda and say to a, an African person that he needs less energy. He's going to punch you in the face. Or, 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 or I mean, in, in, in a nation country, for example, right? When they don't even have electricity. Like, we know that almost one billion people uh, don't, don't have, even have access to electricity today. And hearing that we need a world with less electricity, it scares me. Any other final thoughts? Uh, we are not here today just because of nuclear power. But we are here today because, as very young people, we represent a new way of thinking of environmentalism. Uh, that's something that I would really like to say because Today we, are, we live in a world where we have climate deniers and we have climate fanatics. Uh, and I think that a new way of approaching the problem is born uh, and is eco-modernism, we can call it or call it whatever you want, uh, however you want. But uh, the, the way of approaching the, the problem with science and with data is actually the only way we can solve this problem of climate change. And, you know, uh, being 18 years old and having understood that, I think it's a great gift and I'm very, very, very proud of it. So, and I hope uh, that a lot of more teenagers can, will understand it and will continue on this path because I think it's really, really important. I would like people to understand better what are the key points of nuclear energy. Yeah. And since we're dealing with such a hard topic as climate change, I hope that we will manage to get rid of it in such a relational and realistic way, also basing on science, our activism. Thanks so much, guys. Fun talking well, to you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm.